This video will show you how to solve systems of equations by the elimination method. Sometimes this is also called the addition method because that's basically what we do. Sometimes the equations are set up nice and neatly to be able to use this addition method. Remember, with these systems of equations, we have two variables. We have two equations. We can't solve an equation until we get down to just one variable. So one way to do that is to eliminate the variable by adding. Positive 3, negative 3, y are going to cancel out if I just add those together. Those cancel. x plus 3x gives me 4x, which gives me negative 16 on the right side. Simple equation to solve, divide by 4, which gives us x equals negative 4. So that's half the battle. We have our x value. We still need to find the y value. Unlike the substitution method, I don't have a circled equation to plug this back into. I can put this back into either equation. It doesn't matter. Look for one that might be a little easier arithmetic. In this case, going into the first equation would be easier because there's no coefficient there. So I'm going to plug it into the first one. And when I do that, I hit this arithmetic. Negative 4 goes in for x plus 3y equals 2. Add 4 to both sides. Those cancel out. We have 3y equals 6. Divide by 3, so y equals 2. So our ordered pair, negative 4, 2, is the solution to this system. It is also the point of intersection. If I took the time to graph those two, we would find the point of intersection of negative 4, 2. Then we want to check these. So since I plugged it into the first equation, I'm going to use the second equation as my check. So I'm going to put negative 4 in for x and 2 in for y, and that's what I did right here. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times 2 gives you negative 6. If you change this to plus a negative, negative 12 plus negative 6 is negative 18. That says that checks, so we do have the correct solution. Next one is not set up so nicely. Because if I add these just the way they are, nothing will cancel. So I have to do some work to make them cancel. And all I have to do is notice that if this were a positive 3y, it would cancel with this negative 3y. So I'm going to multiply this entire equation through by 3. Be sure you do the entire equation, both sides, which creates this equation right here. Now I can add these the way they are because those 3y's will cancel for me. 4x and 9x gives me 13x. This is negative 13. Simple equation, divide both sides by 13, gives us x equals negative 1. I just have to pick one of these equations to plug the negative 1 into. It doesn't matter. I'll go to the top one. So here's the arithmetic. Put negative 1 in for x right here and solve for y. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus y is negative 7. Solve by adding 3 to both sides, and we have the y value of negative 4. So our ordered pair is negative 1, negative 4. That's the solution to the system. It is also the point of intersection. Check by plugging negative 1, 4 into the second equation. So we have 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And if you add that up, you get a positive 8. Say because there is just one point of intersection that this is a consistent system. This one, there is no one multiplication step that will get these two values to cancel out. I could do something to try to cancel the x's or cancel the y's. I choose to cancel the y's because I at least already have opposite signs. I don't have the number I want, but I have opposite signs. So if I multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 4, I'm going to end up with a 12y. I'm going to end up here with a negative 12y, and they will cancel. Now, you might be asking, where did the 3 and the 4 come from? Very simply, just swap places. Take the coefficient of that one and place it up here. Take the coefficient of that one and place it down there. Sometimes there's other numbers you could use, but this method will always work. And since these are already opposite signs, I don't need to do anything about the signs. So when I multiply those through, this is what I get, 18x plus 12y equals 60. Be sure, like I said earlier, that you really do everything by 3. That means both sides by 3. Do everything by 4, which means both sides by 4, which creates this equation. Now we have these y's being opposites. They will cancel if we add up, which will give us 38x equals 152. Divide both sides by 38. We get x equals 4. I can plug back into either equation. It doesn't matter. I choose to go to the top equation, and here's the arithmetic. 4 went in for x, and I'm going to solve for y. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4y equals 20. Solve this little two-step equation. Subtract 24 from both sides. 
gives us negative 4 right here, divide by 4, therefore y is negative 1. So the ordered pair is 4 comma negative 1. Here's the check. Since I had plugged my x into the top equation, I'll use the bottom equation as the check. That means 4 is going in for x, and negative 1 is going to go in for y. That's this arithmetic here, 5 times 4 minus 3 times negative 1. Instead of using the dot in between here, I put the negative 1 in parentheses, but it still means multiply. 5 times 4 is 20, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, add that up, gives us positive 23. And like the last problem, there is one point of intersection, so we say the system is consistent. Now to be able to use the elimination method, we need both equations in standard form. So we're going to rewrite the bottom one to get it in standard form. And I'm showing you the steps. You could do this in your head probably. So what I did here is I subtracted 31 from both sides, which is what gave me that line. And then I added 4y to both sides, which gives me this equation in standard form. This equation is the same as this. They're just dressed up differently. Now, do you really have to write all this down? It's up to you. All we did was move the 31 over here, made it negative move the negative 4y over to this side and made it positive. So that's the system of equations just written more neatly in standard form. Now I can decide what to multiply by. This is a good idea right here because this is just a y, so I could just multiply the top by 4, which creates this equation. These are already opposite signs, which is great. So now I'm going to add these up. The y's will cancel. I have 13x is negative 39 divide by 13, which gives me x equals negative 3. I'm going to plug that negative 3 into one of these equations up here. It doesn't matter which one. I chose to go to the top one because it looked a little bit easier. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, minus y equals negative 2. Add 6 to both sides gives us positive 4. And if negative y equals positive 4, that must mean positive y equals negative 4. So our point of intersection is negative 3, negative 4. Since I plugged into the first equation to find my value for y, I'm going to use the second equation for my check. So I'm putting negative 3 in for x. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, plus the 31 that was already there. On the other side, put negative 4 in for y. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Add negative 15 plus 31 does give me 16. In this equation, I'm going to have to multiply both equations by something to be able to make something cancel out. Second, I don't have any opposite sign situation. Everything is positive. So that when I choose to multiply, I am multiplying this one by 3 and this one by negative 5. I could have done the negative up here. It doesn't matter. Again, I did what I did earlier. I took this coefficient and brought it up here to be the multiplier. Took this coefficient and brought it down here to be the multiplier but I made this one negative. I could have just as easily made that one negative. So distributing through there gives me these two equations. Now the 15x's will cancel out. I'm left with negative 19y equals negative 11. Divide both sides by negative 19 and gives me the fraction 11 19 Plugging this 11 19 back in for y into either of these equations would be pretty ugly. So instead of plugging the fraction back in to find x, just redo the problem. Start over again and multiply so that you would eliminate the y's this time. So here's the equations written again. This time I'm taking this coefficient up here, this coefficient down here. I made the bottom one negative, multiplied through, giving me these two equations right here. Be sure you multiply all the way through. This time my y's cancel out. I have 19x equals negative 12, divide both sides by 19, and I get this negative 12 19ths for x. So my ordered pair is negative 12 19ths comma 11 19ths. Remember, your ordered pair has to be x comma y. It's not what you found first comma what you found second. Now, you may not want to check. I understand that. But if you have a calculator that does fractions, the checking is just a matter of typing it in. So that's both the equations. Here's my x, here's my y. If you type this into your calculator, you will get it to work out to be negative 2. You will get this one to work out to 1. 